Touching every heart, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Turning lives around, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. In the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Yes, Lord.
Lord, we welcome you. We invite you into this space. We invite you to come into these moments, into our lives, into our hearts. We recognize you as sovereign Lord and we bless you. Holy Spirit leaders, this morning we pray. Heal our hearts. Fill us with faith. Lead us to the Son, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We love you, Lord, because of who you are. Amen. Amen. Do um, do grab a seat while we say hello. Good morning. How are we? You okay? Wonderful. Can you hear me? I feel like I'm in a baked bean tin. For some reason, I'm getting a bit of an echo. Maybe because I'm getting old. Um, it's great to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's Sunday, the fifteenth of January. We're halfway through January already. When did that happen? Go, yeah, isn't it? Time flies when you're having fun. You having fun, Sam? Uh, it's good to see you. Uh, I am aware, uh, a few people are aware, I know Derek's had his operation and Rob and Jan have uh, down with COVID, the dreaded vid, uh, but we pray that they are well and uh, they heal and I'm sure they'll be with us next week and a few others also. But you are here in the room and um, I just want to bore you with a few notices before we kick off with the rest of our service. Hopefully you have a bulletin in your hand with a lot of information on regarding what's going on this week. But let me draw your attention to a few things that are starting up again after the Christmas season. The first thing that I want to draw your attention to is Mondays. Mondays, now, because of my uh, working week, uh, I'm going to be around on Mondays, which I've never been around before. Um, so on a Monday morning at 11 o'clock, we're going to have a prayer space um, in the church for an hour, a bit of a trial. We see how it goes for a few weeks. So Mondays, 11 o'clock uh, in this uh, building. Uh, when the community meal's on, we'll probably be in this room. Uh, I know that we'll be done before the community meal, but when the community meal's not on, we'll be in the back room. So if you're free, uh, around 11 on a Monday morning. Come and join us. Also, uh, the Bible course, which we've been speaking about for a few weeks. There's been a few link links on our social media and on our, on our email bulletin. Um, the Bible course is eight to nine weeks of an, getting a good insight and overview into God's Word. It is suitable for anybody, new to faith, old to faith, anybody. And you are warmly uh, invited, in welcome. <laughs> you are warmly in welcome to join us on Tuesday nights at seven o'clock for the next eight weeks, starting this Tuesday. If you would like to get involved, could you stick your name on the sign-up sheet for me, um, or sling me a text message or an email or whatever you need to do, just so I get a good idea of numbers, and we may purchase some. Uh, books to go with it, but I'm not going to purchase the books before I know who's attending because um, you're going to need to pay for them at some point. They're only a fiver, uh, but they're a good guide for the course and for continuing what you've learned through the Bible course. So if you would like to get involved with that, stick your name on the sign-up sheet or look out for the email bulletin as well. There'll be a link on there for you this week, um, and that will be great. I'm really looking forward to going on a bit of a journey with you guys through the Bible. It's not going to be looking at, you know, particular characters. It's going to look at the main themes, the main overview of what the Bible is about. God's story and how we play our role in God's story. So, um, yeah, come along. It should be fun. Also on Wednesday, the church community group is back up and running at half past ten uh, alongside uh, Warm Space and Hope Hub. So Wednesdays and Thursdays are going to be quite a busy 
morning. But uh, if you've not been part of the church community group before, you are more than welcome to join uh, Dorothy and John and the rest of the guys. They have a great time. They like to eat. They like to have fun. They like to sing and share and, and, and build each other up. It's a real time for anybody. So if you've not been involved with that, you are more than in Vulcan to go and be part of that as well. Um, so you are invited and welcome at the same time. I've made a new word, Margaret, in Vulcan. Margaret, can you see me? Yeah? Just a boom. Anyway, what are you saying? Okay. They're whispering behind me. Oh, the light's down there. Oh, no. Anyway, just wait. Let's light the cross up. Behind your big speaker, Ian. Oh, the tension is not even plugged in. Anyway, distraction. Let's carry on and they can sort their own mess out. Um, and then Friday is Squiggles again at 10 o'clock till 12, which is our toddler group. We're just going to call it a toddler group. So anybody who oversees the care of a toddler can bring a toddler, okay? That's, you know, getting all the mambo-jambo out of the way. If you're looking after a toddler on a Friday, you're more than welcome to bring your said toddler, okay? And also, just through all of that, um, I'm amazed about uh, of how many people get involved with the things that are going on in the life of the church. I'm always thankful that people give up their time to different things, but I'm always aware of the shortage that we have when it comes to things like uh, courses, when it comes to things like the hub, when it comes to um, squiggles and things like that. We always need volunteers. And so if at the start of this year your calendar has changed a little bit, um, come and speak to us and uh, we will find a lovely space for you. It needs to be the right space because we don't believe in sticking square pegs in round holes. Um, we want to find the right place and space for you with your gifts. Um, but if you have some spare time free, come and speak to me. On the back of that also, at the uh, after the half term in February, we are starting Limitless again, but we're changing the day to a Wednesday night, um, and it's going to be for a couple of hours. It's a drop-in for children and families, and so it's going to be full of kids from reception up until 16, 17-year-olds. Um, we used to do it on a Friday night, and I'm aware of the challenges that we all have when it comes to the end of the week and fitting everything in. If you have free time on a Wednesday night, it doesn't have to be every week, but if you would like to come and help get involved in serving our community this way, come and speak to me again. We need hands. You won't have, you, you know, I'm not going to just send you off with a, a room full of children for you to defend yourself against. Um, we will help you. We will uh, bring you in and we'll develop you at the right time, the right pace and all that kind of stuff. But if you are free at all, come and speak to us because we need lots and lots of hands to help us serve our children and families. So that's all I needed to talk to you about that. And also a few things. That there is the uh, a little advert for some energy advice, which I'm all sure we need some advice on. Just to, um, my jaw nearly fell off the other day. I looked at my recent email from Bulb, who are now bankrupt and they've sold themselves to Octopus. Our last electricity bill, gas and electricity, for since the 9th of December, can I have a starting bid? 300, higher. 1,000, lower. 480, 475 pounds. Our gas and electricity bill for December. Not this church, my house. Yeah, not this church. This church is a whole other level. My house, 475 pounds. So... Yes, one month, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I said that as well, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm turning the heating off completely. The kids don't know it yet, but they do now. That's why they've got new coats. Um, so yeah, it's scary. So if you're like me and you're scared and shocked at the increase and need some advice how to sort out your house so it's economical at the same time as you're I'm going to get political, but I'm not. Uh, the energy advice morning is for you. On the flyer, I've made a bit of a boo-boo. It's not on a Friday. It's on a Thursday morning. Uh, it's at 11 o'clock.
VCP Council are in partnership with Ridgeway Energy and they've commissioned a group of people to come and educate us peasants about energy. And so they're going to come and we're going to get loads of advice and they may be able to tell us how to access free money. Like free money, don't you? We all love free money. And so uh, Thursday morning is for about an hour. Yes, Thursday the 26th, not Friday. I will make amends to Matthew. Thank you. And uh, we'll sort that out. So that is at the end of this month and also at, this, at the end of this month. Oh, uh, this Wednesday, the 18th of January, Star Life Course. We always support the work that Star do because of the ministry that they are, helping people battle through, work they, their way through addiction and controlling behaviours. If you've had a scary Christmas, if you're still eating mince pies and you need to get a hold on it, maybe Star Life Course is for you. Uh, also, it deals with all the serious stuff as well. But it is open to everyone, and they do a good holistic approach to body, mind, and spirit, which is needed when it comes to things like controlling behaviours and addiction. It's at Winton Salvation Army, and it starts at quarter past seven. There are some flyers on the table for you if you want to get involved or know anybody that you think would uh, benefit from something like this. Um, I really, really recommend it. It's a great tool that we have here in Bournemouth. And I have bored you enough. Happy? Good, 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 good. Uh, also, any Christmas cards that you've still got sat in on your mantelpiece, Dorothy, take them to Dorothy. Need some Christmas cards, okay? Uh, there, Hannah Dendy, you've got one on there. Don't worry, there's no money in it. I opened it and checked. Uh, and there's a, there's a couple for Sandra and Jamie. Anybody seeing Sandra and Jamie? They come into the... There's, there's some cards for them. They come into the hub a bit and, you know... Pardon? They come to the house group, so... Yeah, there you go. Okay, see? Uh, we don't need to chop those cards up neither. So, good effort. Shall we stand? We uh, will be continuing our series in the book of Acts this morning. We're going to spend some time in worship and we're also hopefully going to hear some good things of what God's been doing, what God's been saying to you this week, this year, whatever it is. And also, if you feel uh, that you would like us to pray with you in partnership with you for any particular situation, you are welcome to come forward and lead us in prayer, and we will shout up an amen to a God who hears. The good news is that he's still with us. He hasn't gone anywhere. Hasn't gone anywhere. He's calling now, actually. Someone's phone's going off. Yeah, God's on the call. Father, we welcome you. And we're grateful that we're here this morning in your house. And Lord, we want to open our hearts and we want to free ourselves from the past week and the worries of next week. And we just want to sit in your presence right now and be with you. And so, Holy Spirit, would you help us to do that? Would you be with us, we pray? Would you lead us in worship? Would you lead us through your word? Would you lead us as we fellowship together? We invite you into this space. We make room for you, Jesus. Why don't you just uh, welcome him yourself with your own words. Whatever you want to say this morning to Jesus, to God, however you want to invite him into your space and place this morning, just open your heart to him as the team begins to lead us just let him hear your voice this morning. You don't need me to speak on your behalf. God gave you a voice too. We worship you, Jesus. Come on, guys. We worship and welcome you, the living God. Come and invade this space, Lord. Fill our hearts. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus.
Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. Jesus, mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me. All my fears and failures fail my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. Savior, He can move the He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, He can move the mountains, my God is mighty to save.
It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise. It's your breath. So we pour out our praise to you, holy, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you all. lost but he brought me in all his love 
Till the sun sets free Oh, it's pretty I'm a child of God Yes, I Ransom me, all oh, his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, always oh, free. Father's house There's a place for me I'm a child of God Yes, I am I am chosen, not forsaken I am who you say I am You are for me, not against me Say I am. Sunsets free, who is free indeed? I'm a child of God, yes, I am. In my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes, I Who the sun sets free, oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes, I Thank you, Jesus. In a moment, I want to sing that again. Lord, we thank you that you have the final word over who we are. That, Father, you have the power to call out who we are, to call out our identity, to call out our purpose. Lord, some of us in this room this morning have been called many things by many people big people in our lives, important people in our lives, Lord. And those, those words have stuck. They've stuck to us, Lord. And we've, we've worn them for years. 
And Lord, th those labels have affected who we are in what we do and how we behave and the things that we've tried to do, the things that we've tried to heal, the way that we've tried to heal. Those words that have been spoken over us have been powerful, Lord, and have led us into darkness and sin, have led us into places of envy and hate, have led us into places of self-hate and comparison and all kinds of things, Lord, and continue to pop up in day after day, all started with words that have been spoken over us. But Lord, when we sing this song, we are reminded of who we are. We are reminded of our Heavenly Father speaking purpose and life over each one of us. We are reminded of the freedom that we have because of you. We're reminded that those words don't stick to us no more, but Lord, we need reminding. I need reminding. Because I find myself going back to the old place, the old identity, time and time again. And I read, need reminding that I have been set free, that I have been chosen, that I have a plan and a purpose in my life because of Jesus. And that ultimately, I am today a child of God. And you need to tell yourself that this morning, that you this morning are a child of God. And so we're going to sing it again until you believe it. Father, we pray that these words and this truth would seal our hearts this morning. The knowledge of who we are because of you, Jesus. That, Lord, it would be our go-to place. It would be our starting point in life. Lord, when someone asks me, who am I? I don't say, I'm a church leader or I am a father, or I am a husband, but I would say I am a child of God. And that that would be the starting point in my life. That would be the starting point in my identity, not what I do, because if I link to what I do, I end up thinking of the things that I shouldn't have done, and I start building myself up again and again. But I am a child of God today. I am chosen today. I have been, for, I am forsaken today. That Jesus paid the price for me today so that I can stand here today and declare that I am a child of God. 
Holy Spirit, do a work in our hearts today that we would be invited into the freedom that you've given us because of who we are. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for life. Thank you for freedom. Thank you for love. Thank you for purpose. Thank you for family. Thank you, Lord. Father, we love you. And we're so grateful. We're so grateful of who you are what you do and how you love us how you love us despite of what we've done and where we've been and all that kind of rubbish Lord you look at us perfect and spotless and blameless the children of God thank you Lord Amen Amen if I continue, I'm going to end up blubbering my eyes out, and I don't want to do that. God is good. He's so good. So, so good. <sighs> Thank you, worship team. You're not going anywhere yet, but you're doing a cracking job. Thank you. Why don't we show our appreciation for these guys? I wasn't crying. I've got hay fever. Um, I, uh, I want to know what God's been saying. I want to know what God's been doing. Come forward. And also, if you want us to pray with you over anything, with you for, for anybody, you are more than welcome to come and tell us what's going on and we will stand and pray in unity for your friends, your family, those around you that need prayer. So feel free to come forward and Fight your way to the front if you need to. We'll, ta we'll start a ticketing system, maybe. Hello, Fiona. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, this, is, um, this is a prayer request. Uh, I don't think I spoke to you all before Christmas about a very dear friend of ours who we consider to be family, who was having a really big operation in her early 30s. And um, she had the operation. We went up to visit them last weekend, and we were, in a word, incredibly shocked at how ill she was post-op. And this week, she was readmitted into hospital. She's had two emergency procedures already this week, and I had the phone call from her husband last night, basically saying it's life and death. It's been that way quite a lot of the week. Um, and I just had a full this morning to say that she's been taken into theatre for an emergency op and you know hospitals on Sundays don't do anything so please can we lift her up um, that she'll get through this operation mm. and you know I just if you don't mind I'll lead us into pr in prayer yeah. should, just we, um, should we stand with um, just, just as a our unity with what, remind me of the name Lisa Lisa yeah so, Father God, we, yeah. we just thank you for every son and daughter that you have on this earth, but we especially lift up Lisa. Yes, Lord. Um, and we just pray that you will guide the hands of the consultant. We thank yeah. you for a compassionate consultant yeah. who will come out on a Sunday morning. Mm. We, thank, we pray for wisdom because this is such a difficult case. Yeah. And we pray that you will guide his hands. Amen throughout yes, this operation that yes, is going Lord. on right now, Lord, yes, Lord, that nothing will go against this yes. procedure so yes. that she will come through it. 
Lord, when she comes through it, Lord, we just pray for support. She's going to need a lot of psychological support, Lord, because what's happening is her biggest fear. And we just pray you will surround her with caring nurses and understanding and healing, Lord. Most of all, we pray for healing. We know you are a God of miracles. You can do this healing. Right now, as they're opening her up, Lord, you can heal her. The, the surgeons could see a miracle. Lord, we just, we just lift her up to you and we just pray for her right now. Thank you, everyone in this room, for your prayers. We know how powerful prayers are. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, let's just continue to pray for Lisa in a moment. And I want you to use the faith that you've got this morning. That, 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 that When you've had prayer answered, when you've seen miracles happen in your own life, when you know God has provided or God has healed, I want you to muster up that faith and begin to audibly pray for Lisa this morning with your voice, not ours. So let's all just, for, for two minutes, just pray your own words for Lisa. You've never met her, but that doesn't matter because God's got her right now in hospital where she needs to be. Father, we thank you. We know, we've sang, we've declared that you are a way maker. Lord, we've known you make ways in our life, Lord. We've known you've provided. We've known you've healed. We've known you've, Lord, have set the captive free. We've seen you at work, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that this morning you will do it again for Lisa. Lord, as she's in hospital, Lord, going through this surgery right now, Lord, we pray that you would invade that space and that, Lord, you would do what needs to be done so that she can be free from sickness, that she can be free from the fear that's over her life, Lord, right now. We, Lord, we pray knowing that you are who you say you are. Come on, church, lift up your voice. Let's get loud for Lisa this morning. Yes, Let's Lord. just stand and be brave and be courageous with our prayers this morning for this girl. Thank you, Lord. You're still Thank not you, loud. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Father God, just Lord, we declare and we claim touch. life over her this We're morning because of who you are, Lord. Lord. Jesus, we believe in you. Father, we trust you. You are healer, alpha and omega, the author, the perfecter. You are who you say you are, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are who you say you are, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray for her family as well. Yes, Lord. We lift up Craig and we little four-year-old yes, George Jesus. who's so, so lost in all of this. Holy Spirit, just wrap them up in your arms, Lord, yeah. right now. That they would feel your peace and comfort, Lord. That they would know your presence, Lord, in these moments. That they're not alone. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And Lord, you know, may this moment of faith bring them to you as well, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Fiona. Does um, anybody else want to come and share before I believe? Are, are the children going out, Margaret? Do you want all four or just the two? Do you want two and two? or do you, do you, Are you okay with those two? Sorry, man. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good morning, church. Um, I've got a prayer request for somebody else as well. Um, my daughter, Tracy, a year ago, February was diagnosed with breast cancer, and praise God, she's got healed and everything. She's got no problems in that area whatsoever, and that will be a year February. But her best friend, Denise, last week has been attending Cool Hospital because they had found a lump, and they came back on Saturday with the news that she has breast cancer. Now, Denise is a Christian. She's Tracy's prayer partner, 
So I just thank God that Denise and Tracy can come together, pray together about yeah. this, and she is going to be healed. Come on. She's a really good Christian uh, lady, but breast cancer seems to be a lot around at the moment. But the yeah. speed of which it's been dealt with is a miracle because mm. it's only been a couple of weeks from going to diagnosis, mm. and we cannot grumble about that. That's brilliant news. But um, I just pray for Denise and Tracy that in their prayer time, healing will happen. Yeah. Amen. Can you just lead us just for a minute? Yeah. Yeah, go okay. to yeah, quick yeah. prayer. Yeah. All right, dear God, um, another lady is coming to you today. Her name is Denise. Yeah. And dear God, we just thank you that you know her already. Even if she wasn't a Christian, you would know her. Yeah. But dear God, they have that comfort and assurance in her life. So we know, we know that we will have another testimony to say that yeah. she will be cleared of this breast cancer because you are the God of healing. You are the God of love and compassion. And when we give you things, you will answer them. Mm. So we thank and praise you. We thank and praise you for the national health of what we hear goes on. But down here, everything is so brilliant, so quick. But we know that's you, because we've asked for this prayer, and we know that you've answered it. So we give you the glory, and we give you thanks, and we give you praise in this situation. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lynn. Anybody want to come and share some good news? Some no? That's fine. That's fine. Uh, we're going to take up our offering in these next couple of songs before we come around God's word. Father, we thank you for your provision. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing that you give us. And we thank you, Lord, for the way that you provide for Hope Community Church. And we pray, Lord, that whatever is given today, whatever we receive, Lord, would bless this church, would be practical, and Lord, we'd, be, we'd, we'd steward with wisdom, but Lord, it would further the kingdom of God and impact people's lives. That Lord, it would meet need. Lord, that it would prompt people a reminder of who you are, that you would use, Lord, all that we gi are given today to speak the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me and I will stand and sing. I am a child of God. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me and I will stand and sing. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I'm no longer Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help is from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. I will love you. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. You are sovereign 
and we can trust you. And we thank you, Lord, today for that truth that you are who you say you are and you do what you say you will do. And you reign over my life and you reign over this place. Thank you, Lord. Fill our hearts, Lord, with your wisdom, with your strength, with, Lord, the vision for our, for our lives that you have for us, Lord. Would you open our eyes that we could see who you purposed us to be, Lord, and that we would walk in it, trust in you, surrendered, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, worship team. Awesome. Thank you. Little Oscar, hand up. Ah, better than some of us this morning. It's great to see. Why don't you say a quick hello to somebody that you've not spoken to this morning while we uh, sort ourselves out? Oh, what you got there? A cup of tea? Chris, where, where's Elaine gone? Where's Elaine gone? Where, where's Elaine gone with Mohan? Have they gone, they gone to get some biscuits? Are we, um, are, we, uh, are we warm enough? It's nice and cosy, isn't it? Let's, uh, it, was, it was nice and warm when I came in for the first time in ever. Thank you, John P. Oh, yeah, the off. Pardon? The off. You're saving electric. Having a break. Good stuff. Um, that was lovely. Thank you, worship team. Well done, Josh. Well done, Hannah. Well done, Jerry. Well done, Matthew. Well done, Ian. Good job. Thank you for leading us this morning. I did say, Josh, you were too busy gas bagging in the corner. <laughs> That's nice. God's good, isn't he? Um, so we are now starting our 10th week in the book of Acts. And uh, this, the next few weeks, just to explain what's happening, uh, me for a couple more weeks, then we've got Roger at the end of January, uh, and then we've got our Vision Sunday AGM in February, to break it up a little bit more, and then Sue is going to be speaking in March. I think March the 5th. Is that okay, Sue? I'll give you the scripture. February. It'll be on the bulletin next week, mate, all right? 
I'll make sure it's the right day and the right time and everything before I give it to you. Pardon? I can't remember off the top of my head, you know, I can't. My head's like a sieve. Hmm. But so, um, there will, we won't be just flat out. I'm trying to get Mark Greenwood here as well. I thought, presumed that I booked him again for Mother's Day, like I do every Mother's Day, and then I had a bit of a brain fart this morning, and, oh, not this morning, this week, and was like, I don't think I've ord- I ordered him. He's not a takeaway. I <laughs> so I actually, I actually emailed him and went, mate, have we, uh, are you coming? And he's like, no. I was like, oh. Because he always comes around the time of the Six Nations. That's me and Mark have got a good relationship around rugby. And so I was thinking about the Six Nations, which I'm really excited for. And uh, it prompted me to think of Mark Greenwood. So hopefully he'll be back soon as well. Okay? Okay? Good. We're looking forward to Rog. Although I'm not going to be here. It's not because you're talking. Uh, It's other family commitments. But we will be listening far and wide. We probably will, actually. So this week we're at the end of chapter 4. If you have a Bible, uh, you can open it. We are a church that likes people to bring their Bibles. Did you bring one? Have you got one on your phone? Turn it. Um, also, something that I'm messing about with right now is starting a, um, a church version. Um, so version is the, the Bible app, it's called. It's all over the world. It's an incredible resource to use if you've got it on your phone or, or on a device. Um, and I'm, I'm, we've registered as a church belonging, Hope Community Church, so soon you'll be able to um, join the church online, which is, and there'll be a place for you to post things and discuss and all kinds of things. It's another way just to engage with scripture and engage with each other and uh, we might get some little reading plans up there for a few weeks at a time that we can all jump into and have a discuss and a chat about and that, all that kind of stuff. Um, so keep your eyes open. I'm, I'm still trying to work it out, but keep your eyes open. I'm trying to work lots of things out, including websites as well. So it's fun. It's fun leading a church. It's fun. It's also challenging. It's when you're on a diet and all you can smell is bacon sandwiches. Um, but anyway, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm getting distracted. There's no surprise, is there? So we're at the, uh, st- the end of chapter four this morning. Um, last week we spoke about something that I've also forgot. Prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Prayer. Yes. And why? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Anne. You were listening. Um, someone was. Uh, that was a test and you all failed. Anne? Next level. You are a Christian now. Pardon? Yes. Uh, Don't get out of that one, Patsy. You failed. Anyway, so we're at the end of chapter four this morning. um, And I I want to just start by saying this. Um, I have experienced many different cultures in my 42 years, I have experienced cultures of uh, fear. I'd say fear when you are looking over your shoulder constantly because you don't know what's going to happen or who's going to run through your door and do something. Uh, I have experienced lovely cultures overseas in Kenya and Guyana. I've experienced uh, rugby culture in Gloucester. Uh, and tried to play for a rugby team, but didn't partake in their drinking games. So I wasn't really one of the team, but it was fun to watch. Um, I have experienced cultures of honour and service and honesty and therapy and all kinds of things. And I've just started working for Beaufort Care Group, who are a company dedicated to the looking after children in in care. And I've walked into a new place of work, meeting new people, new leaders, all kinds of things. And I am overwhelmed with who they are and what they do because of the culture that they live. I'm overwhelmed because I've never experienced a culture of care like this before. They are changing the groundwork of looking after children in care because they are promoting and encouraging a therapeutic home rather than a home of do's and don'ts and crime and punishment and consequences and stuff. And can I just 
Children in care are not going to listen to anything like that. It doesn't work. They've had, they just, and so I've been overwhelmed with how they have approached their culture. I've been doing a couple of Thursday and Friday, which are my kind of care group days, really. I've been in training the last couple of days. Um, and I was, about, I was quite fearful, if I'm honest, of what I was walking into, because it's called Team Teach. And Team Teach is about physical restraint. Because scarily, sometimes children in care need restraining. But the start of the course, two days, intensive course, they said, this isn't about physical restraint. This is about the other 95% of kind of before it ever escalates to the place where you're going to need to do this. But we need to show you this for your own safety. And, and, and But they talked about 95% of de-escalation before it even gets to that. They talked about the, the philosophy of what it means to care for children and the, what they are actually trying to do and how they are trying to connect with the children in a relational way, not an institutional way. They don't want to be an institution, which is, is ground-based in, in social services. A lot of areas of social services and Ofsted don't like what they're doing because of how they're doing it, because they're trying to be a family rather than an institution. And if there's, if there's one thing that a child in care needs, it's not another institution, it's a family. And so I've been overwhelmed by how they've approached me. It's, Hannah will tell you, it's doing my head in in a good way. Because I'm learning lots, but I'm also... Uh, awkward. I'm also being deeply challenged about who I am and why I am and all those kind of things that we don't need to look into right now, but it's challenged me as a parent, it's challenged me as a person, it's challenged me as a child, like I didn't expect it to be this intensive, but I am so grateful for it and grateful for the privilege of, of being able to serve these children in care. But the culture has just blown me away. And we experience culture in our workplace. We experience culture in our place of learning. We experience culture in our homes. And we really do experience culture in church. They talk about it all the, all the time. And church is, is there. No, culture, no matter how big or small, it's there in a church. And it's really about who we are and what we do and why we do it, that is culture. It's those things that we, we go back to without even thinking about what we do, why we do it. Some churches will fight and strive for a culture of excellence. Some churches will have a culture of evangelism. Some cultures will have an invitational culture. Some churches have a, a, an, a culture of worship or slash performance, where it's not actually about worship, it's about how shiny my shoes look on a Sunday morning for people to see me on the platform. But I'm not going to go into that. But some churches do have a genuine culture of worship, and it's not about the platform. Some churches have a genuine culture of community. Some churches have a genuine community, a welcoming culture. Every church that you walk into, you will experience some kind of culture, what they do and how they do it. They will model it and, and talk about it from the front very often. And there are lots of different cultures and it can be quite, uh, you know, as, as, a, as a leader of a church, it's kind of my role to set that culture, to envision that culture, to demonstrate, celebrate, keep that culture and fight for that culture. Because we all bring our different ways of doing things into one building and we all have our personal preferences and we want to do things certain ways. And more often than not, the job of the leadership of a church is to keep going with the culture that they believe in. And today I want to ask you this. What does a culture of encouragement look like? What does a culture of encouragement look like? And if you were to stop and ask someone who has visited Hope Community Church recently, and if you ask them what is the culture of Hope Community Church, what would they say, what would it take for them to say that church is a really encouraging place? Because I could have just 
save this for Vision Sunday, but I'm not going to. But this is where I feel we are as a church. I, I don't want to be a polished church. I don't want to be a church of authority and power and prestige and lord it over you people because I'm just the same. And we're all the same. I don't want to strive for excellence because we end up striving for no reason and we get tired. I want to strive and be known that we are a church of encouragement. And so what would it take for visitors to say that church is a really encouraging place? And so this morning, I want to cast a little bit of vision, if I can, of what that culture could look like for us. And praise God that he's also gave us some scripture to look at that will help us. So that this morning, scripture actually casts that vision for us. This morning, we're given a bit of a snapshot, a snapshot, 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 Polaroid picture. One of those. Can you remember those? Remember those Polaroids? We're going to get one for the church. And we're going to stick your pictures up on the wall. Is that okay? So if you can put your glad rags on, put your wigs on, Mohan. You can comb your hair. You can do everything that you need. Ready for Polaroid pictures. And you've got to smile. Okay? Okay. But this scripture gives us a bit of a, 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 an Instagram post. <laughs> a snapshot of the first church in Jerusalem. And, and it sounds a lot, when you read in Acts 2, verses 40 to, um, 32 to 37, you see exactly the same. And it, it shows us the way that co this community is encouraging each other in practical ways. It also helps us define what a culture of encouragement can look like. And so let me just tell you first and foremost that the Culture of encouragement is divine, defined by friendship. Friendship. There we go. Don't sort not now. Verse 32 says, The full number of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Friendship. I love to see how people in Hope Community Church care for each other. Most of that I'm never privy to, and I don't want to be. You don't have to send me an email to tell me how good of a Christian you've been this week and how you've been friendly to people around you. But I know that people meet up with each other. I know that you're always gasping on the phone to each other. I know that you're always texting each other and doing things for each other. I know that people are friends in here because we should be. It should start with friendship. It warms me to think of how you are. Can you imagine a church of 5,000 people all caring for each other? Because that's what we read in the book of Acts. And this group of believers, they traveled from everywhere. They, just were from what, they weren't from just one place, but they traveled from everywhere to come and gather. The towns and villages, they were from different communities and backgrounds, and they and yet they are marked by unity and friendship. That's right, Oscar. You have to know what's going on in each other's lives if you want to encourage each other. You have to start with friendship. He's fine, don't worry, Hannah. He can say amen, it's okay. Bring him out. He's not doing my head and it's fine. We've all heard, we've heard this before. Love is spelt. T-I-M-E. If you want to show someone you love them, give them your time, because the time is the most valuable resource that we have. Giving someone your time is the most valuable resource that you can have. If we want to create a culture of encouragement, we need to spend time together. Don't run away when you see someone from church in Tesco. <laughs> run to them. Run to them. Don't run away from them. I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, I don't know if you do. I don't. I'm, I'm just, you know, but I'm, it's just a simple... Anyway, you have to know what's going on. If we want to create a culture of encouragement, we need to spend time with each other. As a church, we don't spend a lot of time with each other during the week uh, in our diary. 
because you don't, you don't need me to say, let's go have coffee together, people. You can do that yourself. You don't need me, but as a church, we put on things and stuff to gather around. But the hub is always open to jump in and grab a coffee, and people are meandering through the church. You are always welcome to come and grab a coffee and put your feet up. Say hello to someone. The guys that are working in the coffee shop do a great job, and I'm so thankful for them. Sue is always willing to give an, her time to you when you come in. She does a great job. Anne does a great job. Patsy does a great job. Rachel does a great job. Carmen does a great job. Helena does a great job. Great jobs. Everyone does great jobs. If you, were, if you weren't here, I'd say something. I wouldn't. But it's always open for you. Understandably so, life is busy. And so during Monday to Friday, 9 till 5, it's hard to spend time with each other. We're all bogged down with life, let's face it. But we come together on Sundays and sometimes we spend some time together. And, and the one thing that warms me now that uh, ar around the hub and the back hall is that people linger. I like a church to linger because it shows that it's not just about putting your Sunday best on, performing for an hour and a half on a Sunday morning, but you're actually spending some time talking to people. And we've created a space for you to linger. It's not institutional, it's homely and friendly and warm and it is now the heating's on. And, you know, we want you to be part of that so you can spend some time just chatting away to people. If you want to sit in the back till two o'clock on a Sunday afternoon, feel free. If you want to grab a, a delivery room, feel free. Feel free. That's what it's there for. But actually, the times of fellowship after the service just don't give as much time to go deeper in relationship with each other. Because sometimes it looks like this. How are you doing? Yeah, good. How was your week? Yeah, good. Okay, see you next Sunday. That's it. You know, that's it sometimes. You all right? Yep. You okay? Yep. All right. See you next Sunday. That's not fellowship. That's not friendship. That's being British. <laughs> and it's one reason that I love a good bring and share. A table Sunday. When I see people eating together after a church service or whatever we put on, uh, it's just lovely. It is lovely because then people relax and they sit and they talk to each other genuinely and they eat all kinds of food. I, I love uh, Tina and Natil coming to, with, coming to be with us for the last couple of months and bringing their food, their Indian food to us. The biryani that they brought at the table for my life. I would live on that. Um, so I love that we can do that together and spend a bit more time with each other, growing that little bit more together. It takes time, though. I don't expect you to know each other deeply, intimately, after only being in the church for a couple of months. It just doesn't happen. But spending time purposely, intentionally, together at different times all helps. The groups that we facilitate can, can offer those spaces. Even if it's something like the Bible course. Uh, you know, we're starting it on Tuesday. Another plug, we're starting it on Tuesday. What better to get to know someone than when you sit around and you start talking about faith and God and scripture and all those kind of things. So come along and start a bit of a journey, not just through scripture, but together as church family. Maybe praying with each other on a Monday morning. Prayer for an hour and go for a coffee. But maybe this could happen a little bit more naturally between us if we took the initiative sometimes. T-I-M-E is the fuel of friendships. So a culture of encouragement is de defined by friendship and also by encouragement. Uh, generosity. Yeah, that's it. Well done, Liam. No one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them. I love that. Great grace. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought, brought the proceeds of what was sold 
and laid it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to each as any had need. The early church were marked by generosity and compassion for the needy members of their church family. Those who had willingly helped the have-nots, even at a cost of them to themselves. And one of the most encouraging things to see is when one person gives generously to another person in need. It's encouragement. It's giving of yourself. That's why we, in the church, we have a small compassion fund. That whatever is given throughout the month, we lay aside a small amount of money to a compassion fund that is there to meet people's needs when they need it. Whether it's a cooker, whether it's an MOT, whether it's an electric bill, whatever it is. That also, we, we, don't, we don't sell it constantly, we don't talk about it constantly, but I want you to know that it's there if you are ever in a particular need. It's there. I lost my way. And it's also uh, why we try and use an amazing resource called Acts 435. Do you know why they've called it Acts 345? I can never remember it. It's written down in front of me. Acts 435. Acts 435. We're talking about it there. So no one was in need. Acts 435 is a very simple way. If you need a cooker for your house, okay, you go and get a bit of a quote, and you say, well, I actually haven't got the money, or I've got half, or I need some help with it, or I just need a cooker. You come and speak to us, myself, or Hannah, or Fiona, and we jump onto a website, and we log your need. We give the quote, and what it does is people sign up to Acts 435, and they can give a pound, or two pound, or three pound, corporately, together. Churches linked together over the whole country through Acts 435. And within, we've seen it, within hours, people have had the money to get something that they've needed. Whether it's someone needed a bus ticket, whether it's someone needing shoes for an interview, whether it's someone that has needed a cooker. Practical ways. Maybe you want to grab one of these. Maybe you want to sign up so that you're made aware of people's needs and you can give a a few quid. You don't have to buy the whole thing. It's like crowdfunding. Or maybe... You are in need and you've got something going on in your life right now that you you just can't financially meet. We might be able to help you like that. This is what it looks like to be generous. It means that we can help those who are in genuine need. But, But what if you don't have money to give? Generosity just isn't about your money. Like I said before, time is your greatest resource. Your hands, your ears, your mouth sometimes is your greatest resource. We can give of ourselves, we can give of our skills, we can give of our resources, we can give of the use of our car, we can give the use of our storage space, our garden. I mean, you can have my children if you want them, I'll give you them. I don't mind, I'm generous. It doesn't, we're not talking about finances, we're talking about a generous spirit, a generous heart. If you are rich in something, be generous with it. Friendship, hospitality, property, time, skills. Jan Valentine, she's not here this morning. Huge heart to feed people. Turns up on my door the other day with half a corned beef pie. Like, I'm not talking about half a portion. I'm talking about half a tray. And of course, I'm not going to turn that down. Remember... And, and, and there's, there's a maturity that I've learned in this as well. If someone wants to bless you, receive it. Because there is a maturity in receiving blessing. Thank you. It's a blessing. We've all got those things that we can give of ourselves. Whatever you can, be generous with it. So you can use to encourage others. During lockdown, we had a random tray of donuts turn up to our house through Deliveroo. And it boggled us, didn't it? I mean, we ate it first, and then we wondered who. Uh, Deliveroo, I I was so, I loved Deliveroo during lockdown. But anyway, but someone sent some donuts anonymously to our house. Pardon? It was Darren and Claire. And we loved them for it. And do you know what else that did? It prompted us to do the same. 
And so I randomly started picking people that we knew and started sending food to their house. Even friends in Gloucester. I went onto the Deliveroo app. I logged in like I was living in Gloucester and I saw what there's a... And I got a chocolate pizza delivered to my godson's house. And they loved it. That doesn't take much, does it? Just to do those little things. But, mate, if you're having a bad day and a donut turns up to your house and you're... It's not the donut. It's the thought that someone is thinking of you. 84 Name You Road, sausage rolls. If you ever want to think of your pastor. Now, actually, I haven't... As of January the 1st, I haven't eaten a sausage roll this year. Why do you think I'm so miserable? (laughs) But we can all be generous with what we have. Time, our ears. Sometimes someone just needs to... Be someone to listen to them. And so generosity is massive. Hebrew 10, 24 reminds us, it reminds us the principle of encouragement, whether with our money or something else. Let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. And, and, and some of you will also be thinking of Matthew 6. And there's a challenge in that because it says, when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Okay, And I get that. That's about motivation. If your motivation to bless someone on the street is just to come back in here on a Sunday morning and tell us how great you are, then you've missed the mark. If your motivation is to meet someone's needs, to think of them for a moment, to encourage them, then you're not missing the mark. And sometimes I think it's good to say, do you know what? And and the other day when when we gave the chocolates out, People's reactions. Why would you do that? Well, because we wanted to. Bless you. Merry Christmas. It speaks volumes. When you can say to someone, God has really blessed me and I want to bless you. Generosity is one of the biggest, most powerful ways of evangelism, especially in this day and age, because everyone is tight. And everyone, this is mine, this is, I mean, including driveway, parking space, including, don't you dare put your car in front of my house. I mean, we're, you know, we're all like that. My, mine, 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 mine. Generosity. Give, 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 give. Have, 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 have. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. People are like, wow, who is this person? They're weird. I want to be weird for Jesus. Hopefully you do too. And we're going to dream and plan some some inspiring ways that we can be practically generous to our community this year. It may mean you walking down the street speaking to people. Maybe. But that's okay, isn't it? That's okay. I remember one Easter walking down the street giving lollies away uh, and some other stuff, chocolate, and the amount of people that actually came through our door to the Easter service because of that one thing. It was a few years ago now. It was incredible. But generosity is a valuable thing, and it speaks volumes. So a culture of encouragement is defined by friendship, generosity, and by hope. Hope. With great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. This isn't just kind of any hope that you can, well, I hope my football team wins, because they never do. Not in a minute, anyway. This isn't hope that, you know, uh, the petrol's going to go down, the, the cost of petrol. This is, this is eternal hope in the resurrected Jesus. This is resurrection hope. The apostles, the leaders of the early church, they viewed it as their job to tell others about the resurrection because of the hope they have. This is why we're called Hope Community Church. This is why our logo is an anchor, because we are anchored to the hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we will continue to be anchored to the hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If my, it's not my, but if our logo offends you, I'm really sorry. But I'm not replacing it. I'm just saying this because one person drove up to the church and couldn't come into the church because we changed the logo. Yeah, I know. I know, right? But this is who we are. We have hope. We're Hope Community Church. We have hope in the resurrection of Jesus and we believe in community. 
We want to be a community of hope and invite people into our community of hope so then people can learn and what it means to have hope and know that when they walk through that door, they are welcome, they are accepted, they're a child of God and he has the power and the authority to speak over their lives and change who they are from the inside out in a supernatural way. That's who we are. Hope. Hope is an incredible, powerful thing. The apostles preached about the resurrection over and over and over again. And if we really believe in the resurrection, it changes everything. It means that we're not a social club. It means that we are a community of believers of Jesus. That we're linked, connected, joined, heirs of heirs, adopted, children of God. The resurrection is the truth. It's not just an idea. It's the truth that Jesus died and God raised him back to life three days later. It's the truth that God can speak life into the ill. He can speak life into the broken. He can speak life into the addicted. That's hope. Resurrection, hope. And that's what it means to be a people of hope. But there's a second part of it, because if we repent of our sins and believe in Jesus, God promises one day that we will too enjoy the resurrection with him. Each one of us. God will raise you from the dead to a new life. And he's raised some of us from death already, but he's going to raise us again, and one, way, one day we will meet him. That's a song, but symbolically, we're going to walk with Jesus in the new creation that we're part of. That's the hope that we have. That's why I can walk into any circumstance and go, meh. <laughs> you know, oh well, he's still on the throne. He rose from the dead. There's my hope. There's my hope. If God can raise Jesus from the dead, he can work through us to do great things. That's the hope that we have. And that great thing might be singing on the worship team. That, that might be going out of your way to help your neighbour after work or helping those less fortunate you. It might be sending you overseas. If you come to me and say, God's speaking to me to go to Calcutta, I'll say, Amen. Get off. Go. If you really feel that God is sending you to Barbados, I'm coming with you. <laughs> Wherever it is, God can, will, wants to send his people he wants to send a lot of people here to this nation too because we need it. But God can bring life out of anything, death, <laughs> all of it. He can do anything. And when we truly believe the resurrection as a church community, it should permeate our church like an aromatic, stinky aftershave. When people walk through this door, can people smell the resurrection? Does it smell... I mean. Does it smell like death or does it smell like life? When people walk into our environment, what is the odour that we carry? I'm talking symbolically here, okay? Do people smell hope? Do we, do we carry the hope when we go into someone else's house? Into a board meeting, into an interview? People go... Something, something's different about that person, and I don't know what it is. Oh, yeah, they stink. But they stink of hope. I, I want to be a hope stinker. So you get t shirt I stink of hope. Mate, I think we've got one. I think we've got one. A culture, we have so much to be hopeful about. We do. We do. And, 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 and it's like the start of the Six Nations. We're always hopeful. Always hopeful that we're going to win, we're going to get the Grand Slam, and all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, we'll see what happens at the end of the Six Nations. But I've got that same hope about life and about faith and about God because I know who he is and he, he is who he says he is and he does what he says he does and he, he's there. And more, my hope is in him. And I'm anchored to him. And so a culture of encouragement is defined by friendship, generosity, hope, and by people. People. 
Thus Joseph, who was called by the apostles Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, a Levite, a native of Cyprus, sold a field that belonged to him and brought the money and laid it all at the apostles' feet. Barnabas is a prominent figure in the book of Acts. Barnabas means to encourage. But before he was Barnabas, he was Joseph. A culture of encouragement produces people of encouragement. When, you're, when you've been encouraged, you want to be an encourager. I wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing without a good friend of mine called Roger Littleover, who when I started my program at Willardine Farm, spent time with me on a Friday night talking about all those questions that I had, encouraging me to keep going, to keep fighting for the truth, to keep asking those questions, and he gave his time to me. He took me to Bible school interviews. He took me all over the place. He was my, he was my best man. He was, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Yeah, I <laughs> forgot then. He was my best man at our wedding because he played such a key role in my life. And he, everybody knows him as the encourager because it's, it, it's who he is. If, you, if he came into this church right now, he would just be encouraging you straight away because of his testimony, because of who he is and how he lives his life. He's just a beautiful human being. And I always call him my little Barnabas. Because I wouldn't, have be, I, I wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing. Life would, have, would be very different if he didn't come alongside me when I needed someone the most. And there's people out there that need a Barnabas in their life. Encouragement starts with people encouraging each other. But pretty soon it can create a church characterized by encouragement. Believe in the best. There's a man named Joseph we just talked about. He was a Levite. And if you read through Scripture, Levites don't typically own land because the Old Testament law, if they forbid it for whatever reason. This man owns land. And Joseph is such an encourager that his name is changed to Barnabas. And if we look at all the places that we hear Barnabas in the book of Acts, we see that he really is defined by encouragement. Barnabas is a friend. He sticks up for Paul. He's a good friend of Paul after his conversion. When the disciples are afraid of him, Barnabas tells them how Saul saw Jesus and preached in Jesus' name. Barnabas is generous. He sells a field and gives it to the apostles. He's generous. He's hopeful. He encourages the whole church to keep their hearts set on Jesus in, in Acts 11. And he's, a, he's people. He sees what God can do through others, even when others can't. Do you know I love that? I love seeing something in somebody else that they can't see for themselves and just go, you can go after that. It's in you. I think there's something powerful about speaking that life over people when they don't believe it about themselves. We need more people like that. And Barnabas was the same in the book of Acts. He gives John Mark a second chance when no one else will. How many of you needed a second chance and someone gave you a second chance? For whatever reason. Barnabas lives out that call. God wants to challenge each one of us with that same call today. We read in 1 Thessalonians 5, therefore, encourage one another. How can you be an encouragement to someone else? Encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. Jesus calls us to encourage one another, to be a Barnabas to someone, just as we already are, but even more so. A church culture that is encouraging is full of people who are encouraging, who stink of hope. Love that. Love it. But just not a church. This time tomorrow when we're at work, when we're at school, when we're doing whatever we're doing, you can create a culture of encouragement there as well. You can come walking in stinking of hope, stinking of generosity, stinking of warmth. People see Jesus at work in your life. What does a culture of encouragement look like? Or what can a culture of encouragement look like at HCC? Friendship, generosity, hope, people. 
It looks like us grabbing food with each other. It looks like us inviting each other into our homes to play Scrabble for seven hours. Just a bad experience that I had. There's no one here, don't worry. When I was on placement at Bible school, that was hard, wasn't it? it oh, oh. Um, they were lovely people. They were lovely people. It looks like us getting to know what's really going on in each other's lives. It looks like slipping an envelope with cash into someone's door letterbox when they need something. It looks like us all having hope. Hope for each other. Hope for the future. Hope for our ministry. Hope for Winton. Hope for Hawthorne Road. I, I believe in Hawthorne Road. I think people think I'm nuts. I believe in Hawthorne Road. Hope for our families. Hope that what Jesus, that Jesus can do whatever he wants and he can rise from the dead. He can do anything in my life and your life if you just let him. That hope, whoever walks through that door, Jesus can do something in their life. And most of all, a culture of encouragement looks like people. It looks like you, me, going out of our way to tell each other that we can do it. That you can do it. Have a go. Whatever God is calling you to do, go for it, mate. What's the worst that can happen? Because God is at work. I've, I've designed a t-shirt in my own. I stink of hope on one side, and on the other side, what's the worst that can happen? Would you buy that t-shirt? Oh, thanks, Matthew. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Do you know if you said yes, someone else might have said yes. Would you buy that t-shirt? Yeah, thank you. At least you're honest, mate. At least you're honest. It looks like believing in each other's gifting and speaking words of life to each other. It looks like us carrying our culture of encouragement outside and into the places we're at every day. I believe that we have a culture of encouragement in this church. I really do, but I believe we can grow in it. We can strengthen in it. We can go deeper in it, and we can get more people involved in it. I pray that he will make us more, more for him, more encouraging, more generous, more of people. I want to be part of what we're becoming daily. A culture of encouragement, friendship, generosity, hope, people. It's a powerful thing to have. I, I'm, I'm, I'm all for worship. But I don't want the worship to be the main thing of our church. I want him to be the main thing of our church. And I want encouragement, generosity, that welcomes people, invites them in, that believes the best for them and takes them on a journey for Jesus to do something in their life. Everything plays its part. The worship plays its part. The welcome plays its part. The tea and coffee plays its part. The furniture plays its part. So he can do his best. Amen. I have waffled for 15 minutes too long. I do apologise. But there's tea and coffee available in the room to my left. The heating is on. There's a few light snacks. Have a great afternoon. Bless you. Thanks, mate. Thank you.